Hi, my name is Doug Windiker. I'm a product specialist here at Atlas Copco for the QA products. And today we're going to go over QA supervisor and the import and export functionalities. So let's take a look. Okay, so we're going to cover importing and exporting in QA supervisor. Uh, and the two things or two items that we're going to deal with when we're talking about importing uh, in large or in bulk, let's say, to build a database would be a joints and then tools. Those are two items that we can export to an Excel file. Uh, the Excel file effectively gives us a template that we need to fill out the columns and information and then we can go ahead and import. So as a demo in this video, I'm going to do the tools, but the procedure is the same between the tool list and the joint list. So I'm going to go up here and select tools. And then you can see this is my tool list as it exists right now. And I've done some tests in the past already. Uh, you see import test, import test two. So when I hit export up here, I'm going to export again to an Excel file. That'll give us our template. And if I open up that Excel file, because I've already exported it, I've entered in a tool called import test three. Um, I gave it an MWR as the model number, MWR 25. So it's a mechatronics wrench. And then I gave it a serial number of A and then triple three after it. So when we import tools, there are certain fields that are required, and that would be the name, the model, and the serial number location, which my location is Atlas Copco, that's the name of my factory, and then the status. And a status, we can assign it a status of in use, backup, tool crib. So, And then over to the right here is some additional information that a controller unit, supplier, purchase date, joints, these are these are not required, but are, are, we can be added in later. So I think if we're focusing on entering a tool in uh, and we want to get a bulk in there, we can go back and maybe edit it. If we want to enter it and edit things later, we can do that. So again, name, model, serial number, location, and status are the main things we want to have in there to import tools. And similar in the joints, we have certain fields that we uh, are, are required. Um, we have to have a spec in there, a, a target torque, and upper lower limits. And again, there's certain fields that we have to have in there to do this. But the process is, is importing what we have already, adding things into the Excel sheet, and then importing it. So so this is our Excel sheet. I'm going to, this this one tool in line 13 is the one we're going to importing. Now the items in 2 through uh, 12 are duplicates. So what's going to happen is when I hit the import, and I'm going to do that now. I'm going to get a message up there saying there's some errors. So let me select import, select my Excel file there, Excel file there, and then import it. Um, and then I have this uh, message up here. Some tools have not been imported. Check the download file and read the errors. So the nice thing about doing this process is if we make a mistake, we're immediately going to generate a new Excel file, and then there's going to be a column in there um, over to the side and it's going to explain to me or explain to us what the errors are uh, and I know that this one is because we have duplicate existing names as you can see there so there's a column that's created um, that says error messages and we can see what's going on so that's what the issue is with that so now that we're back looking at our tool list you can see there's my import test 3 and that's the one we just added uh, from the Excel file with the serial number A 333. So that's the procedure for importing uh, tools. And like I said, the same procedure is done for doing the joints. There's just a few extra columns there that you need to add in, in when you're adding in a joint. So that was the import and export functionalities within QA Supervisor software. If you have any further questions, contact your Atlas Copco rep. And thank you for watching.